Hi ladies and gentlemen, Jeremy here. Today I'm going to talk about the top 10 most popular fragrances ever made. Number 10 spot, Dior Sauvage Eau de Toilette. It is a miracle, it is a miracle. In, ja in Japan, in China, they say, we want the Johnny Depp fragrance, we want the Johnny Depp fragrance. This is a worldwide sensation. Dior Sauvage on the number 10 spot is a worldwide top seller. It is a mix of fruity, fruitiness and some molecules added. You definitely smell that this is not a Guerlain Chalimar from the 1960s. This uses new ingredients. You smell that it is a modern fragrance. My opinion on this fragrance is it is great for what it wants to be and it is by far the most smelled fragrance when I walk around the street, I constantly smell this thing on people. It's a miracle, guys. Number 10 spot, Dior Sauvage. Number nine spot, Chanel's Coco Mademoiselle. This perfume is obviously a worldwide sensation for women. And I gotta tell you, just as a little side note, dear, dear ladies, there is a proven evidence that if you smell like a white floral fragrance, People think you are slimmer. It is also proven that if you wear a grapefruit fragrance, you feel at least a little bit more confident. When I smelled her, she was wearing something like this, a cute white floral fragrance. I thought, damn, this woman is so gorgeous. So it made her very attractive. I would not say it made her slimmer physically, but I gotta tell you, ladies and gentlemen, fragrances do make you so attractive, so please keep on wearing fragrances. So this, again, is a white floral fragrance for women, and it is a great fragrance for women. My opinion on it, its own success is a bit of a damage for it because too many women are wearing it. Just like Dior Sauvage, too many people are wearing it. You are not the most unique person on the planet if you wear one of these two fragrances. So number nine spot, most popular fragrances of all time, Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. Number eight spot by Honorine Blanc. This is Black Opium Yves Saint Laurent. This, this name is just so, it's an institution in the brain of the people. Well, this is an institution, but this is my least favorite fragrance of this complete list. Why? Because it neither says this or this or this. This is just a mix of a lot of good things. Are you this? Are you this? Or are you this? This is just a mix of everything. The performance can also be better. That's why I never took black opium that serious. All right, number eight spot, black opium. Number seven spot, Dolce & Gabbana light blue intense. I mean, sorry, the normal light blue Dolce & Gabbana. So number seven spot is Dolce & Gabbana light blue. And this fragrance is, you know what? I'm going to do it like this. 10, nine, eight. Okay, Dolce & Gabbana light blue. This is the most sold female summer fragrance in America. The most sold female summer fragrance in America, if you would ask me right now, I would think that. Unbelievable success, a great fragrance, and to me, it is the best summer fragrance for women. I mean the Dolce Gabbana Light Blue Intense version, but the Dolce Gabbana Light Blue Eau de Toilette is the main superstar we are talking about. It is a mix of apple, jasmine, and that's pretty much it. So you got fruits and flowers in a very hot and horny way. Apple, citrus, I do get a nice citrus, and flowers. Apple, citrus, flowers. Gorgeous mix by master perfumer Olivier Cresp. The most popular fragrances of all time. 10, 9, 8, number 7 spot, Dolce Gabbana Light Blue. Oh, now we got the light blue for men in form of number 6 spot, Davidoff's Cool Water. I bought this fragrance especially just for this video, gentlemen. Okay, it was on a discount, 39 euros, 125, you see, that's how it goes. By the way, did you know that some of those grey market guys, when they get fragrances back, you know what they do to act? as if they're sending you a new fragrance and that's why 
you gotta watch out with some of these gray market dealers. They do like this. You see, nothing is coming out. Okay, because the tube is here. Now it just is, is soaking air. And now they wrap it again. Hey, Mr. James Robinson, here's your new David of Cool Water. It has never been used before. You get the David of Cool Water. Yeah, looks nice, looks new. And then, of course, we fragrance guys know how to know if a fragrance is new. You simply spray it well, and nothing comes out. Ah, after the third spray, something comes out. So just for you to know, that's what some people do. Ah, this smells like the fresh fabric softener. This is the most awesome fresh fabric softener smell ever. I am 101% sure that many companies have been inspired after this fragrance to get their fabric softener scent. Many fabric softeners, many room sprays, many hotels even smell like David of Cool Water. This DNA is such a worldwide success. Everybody knows it and I love it. I love this one. Too bad Paul Walker does not exist anymore alive at least in our mind 100%. He was a great representation for this brand. Paul Walker, Fast and the Furious, what a great guy. So number six spot, David of Cool Water, a fresh fragrance for men, great for the summertime. I love it, but it's obviously overused. I would not suggest you to wear it. Number five spot, La Vie est Belle. The Life is Beautiful by Julia Roberts. No, this is by Lancome. And this is the Eau de Parfum. And this fragrance is easily gorgeous and in the top three of the most complimented perfumes when I compliment women. Meaning when I give a woman a left kiss, right kiss, we hug each other, I just smell a woman randomly. Most of the time, if I give out compliments, it's because of this and I always know you're wearing La Via Belle, right? And it's always the same. This is such a sensation. You all know it. This is a bit like black opium, but with a more distinct character. This does not have one particular note that stands out, but to me, this is like the Red Bull, this is like the Coca-Cola, this is like the Michael Jackson, whatever what, the first mover of fragrances that smell like this. This is the first mover of fragrances that smell like this, that got really popular and that's why this gets my respect. On the number five spot, I still love it and I still recommend it to people. Great fragrance, La Vie est Belle Eau de Parfum. Number four spot, the gold bar. Dun -dun -dun. So this is One Million by Paco Rabanne, one of the fragrances that got me into the fragrance game. The opening of this is mouth-watering gorgeous. This is so gorgeous that even women want to wear this men's fragrance. Oh. <laughs> it is so good. <laughs> I gotta do it. Man, this brings back memories like nothing else. No song, no picture brings back memories so nice like fragrances. You love the opening of this. I don't care who you are, you have to love the opening of this. After the opening, this fragrance turns sickingly sweet. It is not appreciatable in my eyes. After 30 minutes, it becomes sickingly sweet, but the opening with the grapefruit juiciness is just gorgeous. Great name, one million, great campaign, great smell. So deserved success, nice one, I love it. But still, it's overdone, don't wear it anymore. Number three spot, Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mal. <laughs> Number three spot for Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mal, you know how serious this list is. So this one, the first fragrance I ever used, the barbershop fragrance, has a minty opening, has some tonka bean mixed with, ah, oh, gorgeous, ah. Oh. This is not smash your head into the table, this is like, Punch yourself in the face, this is more masculine. This is not like the one million, this is really punch yourself in the face. This is Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mal, man, this is a masculine guy, I love it. Wow. I, I also like the bottle, I don't have a problem with the bottle. <laughs> so, 
a clash of sweetness and freshness. Creative. Francis Quirk John, the master performer. Hey guys, you have no idea who's Francis Quirk John? That's the guy that made, that made, that made the, where is it? Ah, here. Francis Quirk John, the man behind Baccarat Rouge, the worldwide top seller, Baccarat Rouge. You know it, guys. Ladies come into the fragrance store and say, I want the, I want the Baccarat Rouge, I want the Baccarat Rouge, worldwide sensation. He started out with this one. This was the breakthrough for the perfumer that has now his own brand. He made this one. And you gotta know, guys, it has mint. Okay, mint is easy going, but you got lavender and you got the tonka bean. Tonka bean is like vanilla, which is super sweet, mixed with freshness, super interesting, super creative, has not been done before like that. Again, a first mover in its industry. There was nothing before like it. This bottle, look how it looks, unbelievable. So, deserved success, 100%. If I would have 1,000 bottles of the original formulation of this, I would get out on the Bahamas and hide and just sell these 1,000 bottles for $800 each. <laughs> you know, that's how valuable they are because they are discontinued, the, the, the original formulation. There was atomic bomb strength, the original Jean-Paul Gaultier de Mal. The real fragrance enthusiast know it, of course. Number two spot. There's one man's fragrance that can beat this one in terms of success, in terms of sales, in terms of success, in terms of sales. Aqua di Gio, the enemy of Jean-Paul Gaultier de Mal. Fresh, sweet, fresh, Sweet. Italy, France. Both legendary in the world of fragrances. You think everything is France, France, France with fragrances? Don't forget Italy, especially Venice. Venice with the Middle Eastern guys that bring brought stuff like alcohol distillation and all that stuff. The first, the, the Maria Farina, the, Gio the Giovanni Maria Farina was Italian, 1709. He was the first guy that used bergamot in a fragrance. Don't underestimate Italy. It's not all France. It's not all France, guys. It's also a lot of Italy heritage in the fragrance industry. Ce vediamo, mi fatto piacere to all the Italian guys. So, this is the big first watery fragrance. This says it smells like cool water, and it actually does. But this is different. It really smells like fizzy water. And this is now established in my brain like a fresh fabric softener. But this just literally smells like fresh water. And what makes it possible is a chemical which is called calone. So C A O, uh, sorry, C A L O N E, calone. It, this was one of the first fragrances that this was introduced. Master perfumer Alberto Morias, who also made my fragrance, in case you're interested. My perfumer also made the most sold men's fragrance of all time. And this uses a bit of the Calone. I read that. So a watery fragrance, the performance is not where I want it to be. So it's almost impossible to dislike this fragrance in terms of how it smells it's almost impossible to dislike the fragrance on how it smells but yeah yeah but wow but i like to make you laugh guys but the performance is not there where i want it to be okay number one spot goes to Chanel number five. The oldest fragrance in this list, the most sold fragrance in this list, the most revenue that was ever made with a fragrance on this list, the most popular fragrance brand that is on this list, the most respected fragrance brand that is on this list, privately held company on this list, 
not a fan of this fragrance. But it's the most popular fragrance of all time. Chanel number no. five. Mmm. Oh, I feel like I'm in Paris in, in some type of boutique. Wow. Paris. If you want to see my complete opinion about five minutes on this fragrance, please check out this video right here. Otherwise, I want to say thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Love you. I love USA. I love India. More and more Indians have the internet now. So I have a lot of more viewers from India right now. I love Brazil. I love Mexico. I love the Guatemala, where I get my cardamom from. I love the Thailand, I love the China, although in China I couldn't use YouTube, so for all the Chinese people that can you look at me, hi, I know in Hong Kong it's possible. I love Japan, I want to travel there to have a tea tasting, where also Steve Jobs and Hillary Clinton have been seen in one of those elite temples, I'll be there in Kyoto. I love the Europe. Hello, <laughs> I'm, I'm Europe, man, guys. I love Poland, I love Germany, I love Italy, I love France, I love Barcelona, I love Ibiza, I love complete Spain. I love everybody of you guys that are watching my videos. I'm getting back to the roots. Thank you. And this actually, <laughs> from the complete day of mine, I'm not kidding you, I'm looking you in the eyes in this case. I'm doing a lot of things every day. This is the best thing of every day, doing a video. It's really the case. Every day, this is my favorite thing to do, to do a video. Because I can totally be me and I don't need to change myself. Because by now I work with so many corporate people you have so many people that have their own head and their own decisions and you don't want to offend them and, and say things they offend them. You have to be professional. But here I can release my creativity, what is on my head. So I love it because for me it's good. And I see that you guys like this. I mean, I still can do spins, guys. But right now I'm not feeling like I'm doing spins. But for everybody that wants to see a spin, Oh man, I'm getting out of shape. Okay, so that was a long video guys. Sorry for the commercials I inserted in here. I hope you can forgive me. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Bye.